Well, 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 welcome back to Crowns Crypto Cave. It's a nice and bright and sunny morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. Want to be wishing you well, want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest, as we say over here in Crowns Crypto Cave. Friday is possible, as it is the rest of the week, and of course, because it is Bitcoin land, it doesn't matter what day it is, <laughs> Bitcoin trades no matter what, but we do have plenty to talk about. Let's get over here in the live scene, wasting no more time, and as always, wish you the best, and as we can see, Bitcoin still on the daily time frame, not really breaking the range either which way. Uh, higher time frame is daily right over here, 377 blue exponential, uh, c governing our upwards uh, you know, our upwards momentum, and uh, I'd look for the 200 exponential to the downside to kind of incorporate the medium to, you know, the intermediate time frame look, essentially. That is the range for, you know, f uh, uh, you know of what I'd be looking for over the next a week, maybe two weeks, something like that. As long as Bitcoin's within this range, just a game of buy support, sell resistance. And right now, we're literally right in the middle of the range. However, if we go down to the lower time frames and go over here to my BitMexican chart, we can see that uh, Bitcoin is forming or has formed a nice horizontal support trend line right over here, bouncing off the 4-hour 21 exponential perfectly and also kind of forming a nice horizontal right around that 4,800 level. So if I did want to make trades on a more, uh, you know, on a more lower time frame scale, this is what I'd be looking at right here, essentially being looking to uh, to sell in the blue box territory, buy in this blue box territory, and perhaps manage trades off of this area right over here if bitcoin pops down you know it could be another little bounce if we break it then i'd be looking for that move down to 4600 by the same token uh as it looks right here right now bitcoin does is is giving a little bit of a fight we haven't necessarily got that move back up to test this blue box territory um uh which i would actually be looking for However, again, it's 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 irrelevant, my opinion on that. The real thing is the trading activities, which, you know, all I'm looking to do is play trades here, play trades here, manage here. That's as simple as it has to be. And quite literally, it can be that simple if you just let it be. Of course, if Bitcoin does take out this blue box territory to the upside, I would be looking at a move towards our next, uh, you know, our next level right around here, right around about 56 to 57. I think this is also confluent with our volume profile. You do see a little bit of activity being shuffled right in over here. Uh, overall, though, this is very low volume uh sorry very very low value uh no business being done areas that we see all the way from essentially uh 4000 to 6000 so really what bitcoin is doing right now is kind of coming back into the middle here and figuring out where the liquidity does indeed lie that's why you're seeing these very floaty price actions where you know the ranges you know bit bitcoin can, tra can can travel like 50 to 100 dollars in a 1 hour dildo before it was 1 hour dildo was like a 10 dollar range and it was i mean that was back over here the dark days but right now uh as you know at you know, as we're kind of figuring out who's who's doing what in this area, that is the disposition. And realistically speaking, uh, unfortunately, if you are going to be taking trades in this range, it does it you know it it does it does kind of incorporate by the same token that stops will have to be a little bit wider just to weather those sorts of swings. As uh, as I'm sure that you've noticed, as of I that the liquidation engine on Bit Mexico has been going absolutely uh, overdrive, even on very small like twenty to thirty dollar uh, increment increment moves. You see people get liquidated left, right, and center. It's just insane the amount of leverage or over leverage that people are incorporating into their trading styles right now but hey that's bitcoin land that's why we love it and just give all, give all your money to fucking arthur uh by the same token if we were to break this blue box territory to the downside 4600 i would be looking for a move down to uh, 4250 to 4300 however realistically speaking like i said uh i am not really in any hurry i don't believe that this range breaks you know i i uh, i don't believe that it breaks anytime soon i do believe that we're going to be hanging out and uh and putting in and filling out this volume profile within this range for you know you know another week maybe two weeks something like that would kind of make sense we do have our daily stokes crossed down and uh and actually flirting right around the critical zone right over here which is typically where i'll try to like where i try to look for for trades uh we don't really see anything on daily rsi yes it is pretty high it, you know it is pretty high but of course it can always go higher bro um again same level that we saw around 2017 when bitcoin was around twenty thousand dollars so historically speaking doesn't like to stay here for too long but more importantly speaking uh it's really the the divergence that i'm looking for in an oscillator like this and i can see, and as you can see even on this spike up over here in 20,000 uh, in december of 2017 you know, this was not actually the actual high. It was about a week later, right over here, when you created some significant divergence between about seventeen thousand and uh, almost twenty thousand. Or I guess on BitMexico, it was it was actually almost twenty uh, twenty thousand and one hundred dollars uh, price per Bitcoin, right over there. So again, uh, realistically speaking, I would be looking for Bitcoin to kind of hang around, fill out this area, and from there, that's when the next big major trade is likely to be had. So going back down to the lower time frames, we do see four-hour stokes are kind of angled down right here. But you know, if I am playing the lower time frames, this is exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, this support right over here, which we kind of just rallied off of, we just went and tested the support. I want to go test the resistance now. The more, the most preliminary one's going to actually, you know, if you want to get really granular with this, going to be right over here, right around about 50-50-ish area. 
So I would be looking for another, you know, another test up into there uh, prospectively. But remember, these are very, 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 very low time frames. The edge on these trades is not as much, although with with the way that Bitcoin's been acting over the past few days, I mean, it's 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 bigger than usual, of course. Uh, still a about a almost two hundred, a little bit above a two hundred dollar range, so not bad. I mean, certainly certainly got some uh, certainly got some opportunity in that range. Anyways, let me just check on over here. Oh man, oh man, just missed a massive trade on forex. All right, whatever. <clears throat> um, anyway, so yeah, you know, if, if you know, if we were to break above this area 50-50, then I'd be looking for that run to you know, it, you know, into this blue box territory right over here, which incorporates the area between about fifty-one fifty to fifty-two fifty, we'll call it on BitMexico, and uh, and those are kind of the areas where I'd be looking for a little bit more of a prolonged trade, I suppose you could say. But remember, I don't, I'm in no hurry. I I do believe that this is going to take some time to resolve itself. I wouldn't be surprised if we spend, you know, like I said, a week, maybe two weeks, something like that. Again. And not something that I put too much weight on, but just because I don't want, you know, I don't want to get into that mindset of FOMO or anything like that. And, uh, and realistically speaking, we just had a major massive move, uh, over $1,000 move. And a lot of the time after that, you know, it's going to spend some time going sideways, shaking both sides out within this ultimate range between these two blue boxes. So real, so ideally, ideally, I want to be taking trades in this $4,600 range right over here and uh, $5,150 to $5,200 right over here. Those are the best risk reward ones from my perspective, you know, uh, tentatively speaking my plan will be to actually buy 4600 have a stop loss maybe 45 45 50 somewhere in this range depending upon how we kind of react in this area i do want to see the reaction overall because because my i suppose you could say my intermediate view is this and it can be summed up very easily actually and it's it's sorry let me just make sure that i'm uh, actually recording okay good awesome great and basically it, it is this <clears throat> As long as Bitcoin defends the purple 200 exponential right over here at about 4,600, I am, I, I, you know, I do side a little bit with the bulls. However, of course, higher time frames, macro time frames, I do not believe that the trend has changed. So, you know, got to always separate these because talking about intermediate time frames that could, you know, last for a week. Talking about macro higher time frames, that's you know months and months. Um, and right now, you know, just focusing on focusing on these lower time frames, I would run with that disposition as a trader. However, if 4,600 breaks, like I said, coming back down, very, 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 very likely to. 43 maybe 4250 somewhere in this range down around here kind of retest the this higher value nodes uh in this range that we broke out of prior um but overall you know bitcoin just just hovering around in this range it is you know it's it's kind of kind of just stagnant after a uh, after a major rally we did we did a set as two days still a uh, two day dildo a uh, two day tildo in stone if i can get my words out properly take this volume profile off it's fucking around with my brain right now and overall ending as a massive rejection off the 200 exponential so i do want to show the now the higher and macro time frames because again i am not convinced you know of of uh, well of anything in this range as far as that as far as those time fr time frames go as far as the lower time frames absolutely you know the play has been to the long side as as i've been long well i'm not really i'm not really long anymore but i'm kind of i'm kind of just flat really is what i am jesus christ man oh man Oh, that one hurts. Okay, that that one actually does hurt because I just missed a pretty damn good trade. Fuck, man. Fuck. I need to put my alerts on. But the problem is that you know, if, uh, unless I have my headphones on, I can't hear my alerts because I don't have speakers on this new computer. Again, I, unbeknownst to me, when you buy a new desktop, uh, it doesn't come with speakers. So, fair enough. Going to be the uh, going to be the priority during this weekend, so I can stop missing these fucking trades. Anyways, um, yeah. So two day dildos uh, close like this. Extremely heavy volume on this as well. Uh, I need to see fall through by taking out the low of this dildo at a uh, forty seven seventy eight and a half on uh, on stamp then yes i'd be looking down around here you know read you know go and test some supports according to the two day supports right around 4500 so in that zone again be between 45 and 46 it does have to be unfortunately a little bit bigger to rep to, to represent the erraticness of bitcoin after a major breakout like this so you know keep in mind on one scale major rejection on two scale lower time frames you know it says still be you know still be cautious of this area 4600 as far as that goes, uh, let's go over here to the three day, three days, uh, three day diddle was set in stone uh, a couple days ago. Uh, yeah, f yeah, a few days ago. I think we set another one in stone. Oh, it's going to be another another couple, uh, in two days on on uh, tomorrow night at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Anyways, as it stands right here, right now, again, another rejection off the three of the 200 exponential is purple moving average right over here. All higher time frames are rejection off these major areas. We see it again going back to the daily, the 377, extremely important for long term trend identification. Two day, we have the 200 exponential, extremely important 
important for basically the same reason. Uh, three day, 200 exponential. Again, once again, getting rejected. And if we go over here to the weekly, we are also not just rejecting from the 89 and 50 uh, moving averages right over here, the, uh, the uh, those exponentials, but we are also crossing these guys to the downside. We're crossing a lower period to the downside of a higher period, that green 50 uh, below the 89 uh, cyan which you know intuitively, intuitively tells you that the trend, that the overall trend is kind of being ground down to the downside. And as long as we're respecting this, uh, that would be the look on that time frame. So of course, I have to be extremely clear, and clear with how I relate these ideas because this is more of a long-term look. This isn't happening tomorrow, not happening the next day, not even happening next week probably, but overall something that I want to, uh, that I want to be cognizant of because if this does get re if this does confirm as a rejection, which we do get another weekly at 8 p.m. Eastern time on Sunday, then this will give me it, this will give us insight into whether this cross wants to be played or not by the bots and algos of the world. And when they play that, then that is going to insinuate that we are going to likely <laughs> to come back down and test the 21 exponential down around here, which would be around that 43, yeah, about 4300-ish level. Um, going over to the month, we see some something similar as well. We see the monthly uh, 10 simple moving average, this red moving average crossing the downside of the yellow 21 exponential moving average which again, just a lower period across and downside of a higher. And more, more importantly, we are respecting this cross so far. So the bots and algos have sold it on first pass. That's pretty expected though. So it's not a death sentence in and of itself. The first pass likely to be sold. It's the second and third that you really have to watch out for. And, uh, and I'd imagine that Bitcoin probably will come back and test that area. And that's going to be where, you know, where the pace is set. But for now, it does look like a little bit of a rejection. But remember, this is on a monthly scale. So we're talking way far out. And I mean, we're, all, we're only on the fifth day of April right now. So got a long time to go. But for right now, uh, does look to me like it does want to be respected. However, <clears throat> you know, realist, you know, the true value of looking at a time frame like this is also just realizing that, you know, as far as a monthly is, uh, as, as far as a monthly is concerned, we have not done anything interesting. We haven't closed above the 21. I mean, we did close above the 50, but that was that you know that was kind of our insight that this month was gonna was likely to be up. I <laughs> would have not said that. Uh, you know, I, I certainly could not have told you that it was gonna be up to five, uh, 51, 5200 dollars. But of course, that's why you know that's why I paid attention to technical analysis, not my opinion. Um, and more importantly, we don't have any higher highs. We don't really have any higher lows. I mean, we don't really have any higher lows to really compare anything with. Just just this is just a lower low over here compared to what we did over here in 2018. And uh, in order to make a higher high on the monthly, actually technically speaking we'd have to go above you know about the 79 8000 level of course i think you're gonna you're probably gonna have insight beforehand uh in fact i'd be willing to pull the trigger beforehand on calling a bull market but going back on over here you know, here's the thing. I used to use the 21 exponential when I was a professional market maker authorized trade on the floor of New York Stock Exchange ARCA to judge if a stock of an equity was, you know, generally bullish, generally bearish. If you're above it, generally bullish. If you're above, if you're below it, generally bearish. As you can see, uh, we are still well below it. And the fact is that we are respecting it as of right now. Like I said, though, first pass, very likely to sell. It's a second and third one that you really got to watch out for. But uh, just kind of back test this in the history of Bitcoin. When Bitcoin lost a 21 exponential right over here in 2014, it was straight down to your ultimate uh, death and death and decay dildo and uh once we regain the 21 exponential um after testing it multiple times one two three and four times uh that was the start of your bull run so i would also by the same token say hey if bitcoin can close above that 21 exponential which is about 5200 even almost on stamp then that would you know that would probably be good enough for me that would tell me that this cross is not to be respected and uh and the bots and algos are going to be on the buy side and if they if they want to move the market then we're going <laughs> to then we're going to see another move up uh like very 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 quickly in a six thousand most likely and uh, and probably beyond at that point anyways okay so that got that or sorry we got that um let's go back down to the lower time frames kind of see what we got going on here uh we played out the bearish divergence that we spoke about yesterday we played out the four hour jewel sell signal um that we saw yesterday as well i think we also saw the six hour one uh given a, give a massive signal yes it did we saw this last night confirmed and then well after that uh we saw that at about 50 50 then all the way down to uh, a little bit below 48 uh 48 so a little bit over a 200 dollars move not bad it's only not bad at all so again if you do have access to the jewel and you took that fucking congrats Congratulations. That was a nice little trade right there. Would I be holding on to this for more? Um, typically speaking, when I see the jewel come down to this line, I actually do expect a little bit of a bounce. So uh, I think that was kind of what we're seeing in the initial, you know, in the initial uh, stages right now. Uh, overall, I wouldn't get too greedy either which way in ranges right now, just because 
you know, like I said, after a big move like this, you're not really going to see you're not you're not going to get like that massive, massive breakdown or breakout uh, realistically very soon. It's, it's going to take some time going sideways and shaking people out and figuring out, you know, exactly who's doing what. We do see our medium time frame also to start to head down. We do see uh, six hour stokes headed down. I believe 12 hour are also down. Uh, fresh cross down actually daily are, of course, still down uh, today are getting tired and uh, and getting very. I mean, we've we're actually in areas that we haven't seen since bull traps of uh, 2018 um, right around this range going over to the three day uh, same sort of thing in fact in fact three days very interesting to me right here and this is where things get this is where things get a little bit a uh, little bit more crazy but we've ha we've been looking at this trend line on the three day stokes for the past month or so we've been slowly 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 approaching it and now we've officially hit it this is a trend line that was born all the way back from December uh, December 15th 2017 when Bitcoin was quite literally well Twenty thousand dollars price per Bitcoin, and we have, and this trend line has has begotten all of the major bull traps of the past year or so. Uh, getting this one right over here in May at ten thousand, getting this one right over here at in August at uh, eighty four hundred, and once again we've approached this, we've approached this trend line, and right now it looks to me like Bitcoin. I mean, technically, we are kind of we are kind of hitting down a cross down, but this is still, um, as we said before, a day, at least a day away from confirming we need to get uh, if if we close here or lower by tomorrow, tomorrow being Saturday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, then yes, this will cross down, and I would and I would in, and I would interpret that as this trend line being respected and this trend in this trend line again getting all of the major highs for the past you know all all you know all the major bull traps this one right over here this one right over here uh for the past uh, year or so or over a year i should say so again a lot of things to be aware of as uh, as i know a lot of people are getting very 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 happy and excited and you should be after a nice thousand dollar move no doubt about that uh, i want bitcoin to be bullish just like anyone else but at the same point in time need to this is really the time to be cautious in my opinion because we go over here to the mbt signal and once again another thing that has just never been wrong in the history of bitcoin doesn't mean that you know that that trend can't change i suppose um but for right now over the whole history of bitcoin the going back all the way to the inception this thing has been perfect at calling the major tops and uh, and major bottoms bottoms for that matter as well when it signals red that's major top when it signals green major bottom and as you can see uh signaling red during the bull trap or this whole bull trap of 2018 essentially signaling red right over here at the run at 20,000 signaling red right over here uh during the bull trap of 2014 signaling red right over here at the parabolic high of 24 2013 2014 and the 2013 parabolic top right over there you will notice that each and every time that it does signal red it actually does stay there for quite some time um I mean this one was kind of a one-off being about five to six months the other one's about a month or a little bit less than that and uh right now we're just in about day two or three of, of signaling red on this indicator um but again getting into the red zone nonetheless so it does say be cautious it doesn't necessarily say that the top is going to be at this exact price point right here right now but it does say that um you know it, it certainly does say hey be cautious because historically speaking this has been the the signal to watch for um on you know especially uh, you know especially with regards to the general trend which putting everything together we are hitting major resistances as we just looked at on the daily, the two day, the three day, the weekly, and the monthly, all very important for the long term macro timeframes as opposed to lower timeframes, which have been showing bullish indications, which we spoke about coming out of this constructive area right over here. And um, and now we're seeing the MBT signal agree with this. We're also seeing again not my favorite thing, not my favorite way of doing this, but we can bring up the the titty sequential just because kind of agree it's you know it's it's a decent it's a decent secondary type confirmation tool but we did print a nine on the daily and if you're not familiar with this this, this create this indicator creates counts of nine uh basically when it gets to a nine it calls either a correction or a reversal so <clears throat> right here right now we're on our first daily diddle after the nine if we go over to a three day i believe that we just printed a nine as well and so if we go over to a weekly we are in the process of printing a nine at major resistance so putting these all together again it is very 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 concerning that we we see this sort of behavior um you know with all of these indicators kind of confluent with each other that typically is where i see the best trades formulate themselves from um like I said, though, with the MVT signal, that that gives you a warning signal. It doesn't doesn't necessarily call the top in and of itself. And and like we have seen in the past, it usually takes at the very least a few weeks to a month to actually play out. So it is on. It is in the back of my mind. The question is, does it? You know, do we put in a top here? Do we put in a top a little bit higher at about 56, 57? Or I mean, could it also be a case that the bear market is over? Yeah, that's always possible as well. But if but remember, my 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 sort of trigger for looking at that is I want to see a monthly total closing above the twenty one exponential uh would be my sort of way of knowing um and then of course if we could if we could just get back above six thousand as well that would be the most traditional way of looking at it like i said though you're probably going to know know a little bit beforehand but right now 
just popping back up, getting our first retest of this 21 exponential uh, after breaking it down in uh, in November of 2018. So no real rush, in, you know, in the current moment in time. As usually the first, you know, usually the first test is going to be rejected. I mean, Bitcoin got rejected so many times. Uh, the last, you know, the last and only time that's actually ever lost the 21 exponential right over here. And uh, you'd imagine that. You'd imagine. I mean, again, it's 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 certainly not a death sentence for it to get rejected for the first try, but. That's, you know, I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Okay, so, 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 we talked about all of that. We talked about the higher time frames. Did I forget anything that I want to say as far as that goes? I think we talked about the volume profile. Again, volume profile just showing essentially that we're kind of in no man's land right now. If we do head down, I'd be looking for 4,600. If that area fails, yep, then then 4,250 to 43. If we head up, then I'd be looking for a move towards 46 to 47 right over here. We could actually put, a, I do believe that I have this marked off on BitMexico. Yes, I do, right over here. Nice. Um, and of course, if I'm managing trades, it's the lower time frames that I'm looking at right now. So that's where all the action is going down. Uh, as you can see, the blue box territory right over here. That's kind of our look. That's that's our overhead uh, overhead liquidity. Uh, this blue box right over here, our underhead, our underhead, our under the feet liquidity. What do you want to call it? Um, but basically, that's where I'm looking to take trades off. If we're literally right in the middle of even the more preliminary range between 50, 50, and 48. So this is kind of you know kind of a no trade zone to me. Uh, if I am looking at oscillators, it does look to me like you know maybe get another test of this area. I mean maybe even consider that last little drive up to 5,000, another test of that area, fair enough. Um, but, but, you know, coming into a weekend again, I'm not, I'm not in any rush to put on trades. Like I said, I've been flat for the, for essentially the last, uh, I mean, essentially since, since this, uh, since this green dildonator happened right over here, I went flat right around 4,900, uh, selling those 4,250 calls for, for about 800 bucks. So I'm, I'm actually covered as long as we're, you know, I don't make, I don't make any more money if we move above 50, 50, but that's okay with me. I'll just add it above this blue box territory right here. That's how I'm managing my own trades. Of course, it's not financial, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor, but but this is the beauty of options, giving you plenty of, well, options with how to manage positions. So if we were to take out this level to the upside, I'd hold my long stock from 39.30 and get rid of those short calls and perhaps perhaps even just buy more long stock against it. Or um, or if we or if we come back down, break some supports. Uh, I, I suppose I suppose if we did break 4,800, I would get rid of I would get rid of some of my, some of my long stock um, and perhaps angle myself a little bit downwards right over here. So and you know, and just keep the short calls. So again, many ways to multi to manage a trade like this. And overall, like I said, no real rush at the current moment in time uh, with the way that Bitcoin's kind of acting coming into a weekend as, uh, uh, as well. I'm curious what the 12 hour total time frame looks like. Yeah, 12 hour just popping back down, testing our support at 48. Uh, but like I said, you know, all higher time frame oscillators are coming down right now. We got 12 hour down, uh, eight hours should be down. Yes, it is. Six hour is down. Four hour is down, like getting a little bit more mature. 10 hours is going to be down. And like we said, daily, daily is down as well. Um, and I believe if we go over here to the weekly, no, no, the weekly doesn't have anything to be aware of. Uh, we weekly stocks are getting way up there, levels that we haven't seen in a very long time either. Um, <clears throat> so not not very not very uh, relevant right now. But overall, uh, that's kind of what I'd be looking for on the lower time frames. More importantly, let's go check out the other uh, top shit coins in this market. Or before that, let's go check out GBDC. GBDC is selling off pretty aggressively from its high. So another kind of confluent factor saying, hey, we had a major major uh, resistance. And now down, whoops, uh, I want that on, but this off, disgusting. Um, and as far as GBTC goes, I would be looking for ultimately a run back and test to this area right over here. Uh, that's going to be, you know, this this area needs to be defended for the bulls right at uh, 5, 527, we'll call it, uh, kind of defending this gap right, right, uh, right now. But we filled the gap, we filled the overhead gap, also tested the 200 exponential, extremely heavy volume and confirmed a rejection and down with fall through to the downside. So I would imagine that this probably does have you know some more weight to it if you want to get super granular with it i could put a horizontal right over here probably play the range intraday between 583 and uh, 550 you know if you want to, if you're if you're just being a buyer in support selling resistance easy enough right there um but we do see daily stokes actually still headed up funnily enough and we do see daily rsi mm -hmm. Yeah, again, not really too much to say here, but breaking out, breaking out of the, you know, breaking out of this resistance in the neutral zone uh, that we've lived under for the past year. So, you know, we do have kind of the initial implications of doing something new as far as that time frame is concerned. Uh, going over here to the weekly, it's going to, I'd imagine that we probably do close the weekly above the 21 exponential, but uh, that's going to be the big thing for this week. If we do, then I would look for, you know, I actually would look for a test lower, but that would, con that would kind of confirm in my mind that that's going to likely be a buy um, and not, not going to break to the downside. Uh, as it's going to have more positive positioning. So keep that one in mind. Um, if we go over to 
Uh, did I want to check Weasley Stokes? No, not really anything here either. Yeah, n uh, not really too much too much insane there either. So, you know, I've talked about all of the bear shit. Let's talk about some of the bullshit just because, um, you know, there, there, uh, there, there are going to be things very likely changed around this week. Like I said, if Bitcoin closes above the 200 exponential, that is a damn good sign. We haven't, you know, that's kind of been holding us back for the past five months in this more aggressive downturn right over here. Um, and of course, we clo if, if we close above the 21 exponential at, at 4350, then that's kind of my trigger for coming into the next week, looking to be a buyer on the next uh, test of legitimate support. Support, ideally around 4600 so when I'm looking for that test of 4600 if you know if, if it happened next week after closing above the 21 exponential that would look a lot better to me that would look significantly better so and, and sorry, and, and, and I'd certainly be looking to be a buyer there for at the very least a nice little, you know, a nice little swing position. Um, and uh, and yeah, uh, if we go over and look at the RSI, we were creating a we created a nice support trend line for the RSI in late, sorry, mid to late uh, 2018, which we broke down from on the break of 6,000 down to 3,000. Bitcoin actually just blasted right through it on the first pass. It did not even it did not even try to uh, it did not even try to reject it. In fact, just straight up. Being erect. I'm gonna imagine. I'm gonna. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take some liberties here and say that we probably don't close back below 4100 by end of week. Again, I've seen crazier things happen, no doubt. But uh, but hey, um, as far as it's concerned. You know, to me, this is telling us that something new is going on as far as the RSI is concerned. We, I mean, we haven't seen this level in RSI since, uh, what is it, February of last year. So it's been a while. And more importantly, we've broken this trend line, which I would now, I would now look for this to act as support right at the edge of the bearish control zone. So now there's going to be a massive support trend line coming in right at the edge of the bearish control zone, meaning that it's going to be more difficult for bears to actually take control on a weekly total time frame basis. That would certainly be a more bullish thing. Um, if we go over, what else do I want to check out from the bull side? Um, I think that's kind of the biggest one for me. I suppose the, the other biggest one would be this right over here, the the blockchain uh, dollar valuation, or sorry, it's basically it's basically the dollar valuation of coins mined. Uh, if you put a chart in on this, oh, motherfucker didn't save it yesterday. That's annoying. But each and every time that Bitcoin's had like a parabolic run on this, it has marked off a, uh, you know, it, it has marked off kind of a new low, a new ultimate low for Bitcoin ever since that. Uh, just kind of going through the whole kid and caboodle right here you do see that it does have good historical accuracy. And right now we actually have hit and touched down on this trend line born from the last market cycle, which has called lows in the past. However, as you also see, it does you know, it does spend time grinding this area as well. So, you know, could Bitcoin come back down uh, below 4,000 and grind that area up? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but this would suggest that the lows are in as well. So something worth something worth considering just because, uh, you know, in the higher time frames, we do see exhaustion. We do see signs of reversal. But does that necessarily insinuate that we're going to have lower lows? Um, it does. I mean, it does not on its own. The what would insinuate that we have lower lows? And this is the technical analysis way of doing it, not my opinion, which I put significantly more weight on. And if we go over here to the weekly, it's just look, it's just this simple. It's quite literally this simple. If you just let it be, man, uh, this pink 200 moon average to the downside at uh, around 3500 as long as we're above that it's really not appropriate to be talking about the lower targets like the 2500 the 2000s all that kind of stuff and for the super bears around 1000 which i'm not really on the same side of um but uh but hey as long as bitcoin's above that as a trader i'm not looking for that major massive momentous uh, trade to the downside i'm more so looking for you know, I'm, I'm more so looking to play ranges. If we break that area, then yes, I happily put on a trade, you know, looking for looking for 2,500, maybe a little bit lower uh, if we were to break that area. But remember, we are well above that area right now. So as a trader, not really, you know, it's, it's good to know where you're going to make decisions, of course, but it's not like probably not happen today. <laughs> you know, it's not happening today, not happening tomorrow, not happening this month, most likely. Um, so again, you know, perspective right now in the higher time frames is uh, is is really where it's at. Uh, more importantly, I'd be looking for the 200 exponential to be vehemently um, vehemently uh, what's it called defended by the bulls. So we have a lot of things coming in now defending that kind of like low 4,000 level. We're gonna have likely the weekly RSI, likely the weekly 200 exponential, and likely the weekly 21 exponential all around that range. And uh, really want to see bulls, you know, keep up the momentum. You know, it, take control if they are if they are gonna defend that range. That would insinuate that they are taking control. Control, and those are going to be major, major buys. So, uh, so to kind of like wrap up my beliefs from the lower time frames, lower time frames, very, 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 very simple. Going back now over here. <clears throat> 
making trades off these areas very simple uh higher time frames a little bit more delicate as it's going to depend on where we close this weekly but i'm going to imagine that we probably do close above the 21 exponential so that means that the next tick i'd be looking to buy anywhere around that 21 exponential on the weekly and uh, and that'd probably be another you know a little bit more of a momentous trade i'd imagine so that's tentatively speaking of course we need to wait until it's actually settled in stone at uh, sunday at, EP at 8 p.m eastern time but that would really you know provide some more clarity for my trading activities next week for the more longer term uh, if i can do that then i'd then i'd be happy to hold some uh, some some like you know midterm midterm longs i guess you could say um but for right now still kind of in the decision phase although it, do, it does look quite likely so again you know lower time frames to medium time frames certainly bullish uh higher time frames switching a little bit bullish macro time frames still bearish uh, still in a downtrend on the monthly still still not taking out the critical areas for overall trend reversal that I paid the most attention to. And that's, you know, that's obviously talking about, you were talking about months out, you know, months out of the way right now. I mean, just like when people are getting really excited when Bitcoin pumped up here to 12,000 or here to 10,000 or here to 8,400, you know, don't, 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 don't lose sight of the forest in the fucking woods or whatever, <laughs> whatever that is. You know what I mean? More importantly, um, you know, more, uh, more importantly, we still have not made higher highs on a weekly or a monthly closing basis. Still, still just kind of doing the same thing as far as those are concerned, but all other time frames below that have actually switched quite bullish. So fair enough. Fair enough. Um, let's go and check out the other top chick wins. Uh, how about some, how about some Mrs. Litecoin as she has been the ultimate leader and really, I mean, realistically speaking, just looking at the weekly, this is, I mean, there's no reason to be bearish on Mrs. Litecoin. This is why I have that rule. You got a golden cross right over here, the green 55 uh, on top of the purple 200 exponential. You're above all major moving averages. We were bullish on this guy, or sorry, this gal, this girl, this beautiful lady, this very strong and independent young woman. Um, right over here, I suppose you could say. Right uh, right when I got the golden cross, that's when I said, hey, I don't care how much fucking divergence you have. I don't care, I don't care how much of your oscillators are pointed down right now. I don't trade against that. And uh, well, that's why, because then you have a nice move from uh, about $58 to $100. Not bad, not bad, baby, not bad. Uh, but right now, um, does Mrs. Litecoin looks like, looks like she put in a little bit of a top? Um, we do have Snow Stokes kind of snaking around. We do have daily daily jewel might be setting up in the next few days, but uh, because it's because it's approaching the the light blue is approaching these guys so aggressively, and they're both all like kind of vertical. Uh, those are the ones where the blue can actually overshoot. Uh, more importantly, what I should be looking for is you do see a nice trend line kind of forming coming down from from um, from this angle right over here, and motherfucker, they did it again. I don't want these alerts. Get these alerts out of my face. And there we go. Uh, do I want this trade on Forex? Mm, might want that. Nah. Um, so yeah, more importantly, you know, looking at something like this, uh, if you know, if you do have access to the jewel and you see this break, that would be, you know, uh, that would be the indication that I'm looking for actually uh, on top of an act, you know, an actual signal itself. Uh, going over to the four hour, mm, looks pretty damn similar to Bitcoin actually. Uh, putting some bearish divergence at the top. Now coming back down, Tesla the 21, exactly what I look for. Um, you know, probably going to grind this area out, and then I'd be looking for. I would look for. I, I would look for this to to try. You know, test lower. Uh, but overall, I want to be very clear in stating this. I've not been on. Uh, I've not been bearish on Mrs. Litecoin for a while, and I would not be bearish on it now. Uh, just because I'd be looking for a pullback does not mean that. Uh, uh, does not mean I'd be bearish. Uh, about seventy three dollars would be a gift if it came back down there. Although it did kind of retest that the other day on a very aggressive sell off right over here. Um, you know, is it going to try to stair step its way up? I no, I I uh, I do think that it tries to tries to consolidate a little bit lower first, a AKA meaning I don't think that we take out a hundred dollars before before popping back down and testing this lower level, whether it's you know seventy six or sorry, whether it's seventy seven or seventy three or or, or sixty nine, uh, somewhere in that range. Probably you know probably going to come out the same time when Bitcoin tests uh, forty six hundred. If it does test forty six hundred, of course it doesn't need to do anything. But that's where I start to become more interested in like an actual you know legitimate trade that I'd be interested in perhaps even holding for a little bit of time um so right now mrs litecoin again the best you know has led the market out of the bear market cycle in the past if you go over here to the weekly on bitfinex you do see that in 2014 2015 mrs litecoin turned around the corner i would argue right here on this massive high volume green dildo uh which shot all the way up uh in june of 2015 you'll notice on mr bitcoin however he did not turn around until 
oops, well, on that chart, never, uh, but right, on, but, uh, but right around here on, in October of 2015. So, you know, about what, three, four months, um, three, four months in advance, Mrs. Litecoin was, was, was kind of working her way higher while Bitcoin was still going sideways, t uh, slash downwards over here. I know that, that does have to do a little bit with the fundamentals, uh, of, um, of, you know, the block reward happening or whatever you want to call that. But overall, my point is, is that, hey, we actually have seen that trend in the past where Mrs. Litecoin does bottom out first. And uh, and like I said, Mrs. Litecoin has, you know, we've been saying this for a long time. Mrs. Litecoin has everything that I look for and to denote a bottom. You, I mean, especially on the lower, on, on a daily, you see increasing volume as this one just V bottoms out of here, getting a golden, golden cross along the way. I mean, this is, you know, it, it, it was appropriate to be, to be um, what's it called, uh, apprehensive on this one, as long as it was below 4,700, or sorry, $47. But once it got above, and especially once it started main, to maintain this purple 200 expansion moving average, uh, that's when the tide slowly started to shift. And then I'd say, you know, as a trader, I would have started to look at trades right here at about $58. Uh, Nice, now having a very, 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 very nice move. Weekly is going to likely close extremely strong. Uh, weekly support will be right around this range, around that $72, $73 range. So if we did pop back down there next week, that's where, I, that's where I'm kind of looking uh, towards. Um, it would probably, it'd probably be a little bit scary in the moment, but overall, uh, I think that that would be, you know, pro uh, probably a good buy, uh, not a good, like a good buy or a good buy. <laughs> what does that mean? No, I mean like a good actual, uh, pro probably a good trade. Of course, not financial advice, not a financial advisor, going to depend still what Bitcoin does. Um, let's go check out Mr. Buterall. How's he doing? Is he sick? Is he healthy? Is he following or is he, well, yeah, certainly, certainly the least impressive of the big three as I take a sip of this water because I'm damn thirsty. Oh, man. There we go. Uh, major rejection off the purple 200 exponential moving average right over here on extremely heavy volume with follow through. Sorry, no follow through. I apologize about that. No follow through. But we have come back down and tested the 200 simple right around 154. Um, that was the buy right over there. If you do put on our drawing tools, uh, hit bit, uh, basically hit our horizontal. If I raise this up a little bit more, it probably looks better. Uh, but right around this range, I'll line it up with the 200 simple. Actually, it's going to be more appropriately right here. <clears throat> um, if that area does break, if the other majors want to test lower, I'd be looking for Mr. Buterall to test this area right here at about 146 and a half. But overall, uh, going to do what the rest of the market does. The thing is, is that Mr. Buterall does actually have some bearish divergence on the daily. And more importantly, we do, or sorry, not more importantly, but also we do have, we, we do have daily stocks crossing down as well. And coming off of a major rejection on the 200 exponential like this, you know, uh, 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 did I technically, or, or did I potent, uh, potentially just miss another sell right here uh, at the 167 level? I guess you could make this a little bit of a zone as well. Uh, get the wicks in there, uh, 170 to 167. Yeah, I mean, could be. Um, certainly could be, you know, yeah, we did kind of take a stab in there. Um, just testing the, the, R, the exponential and the RSI. Mm, again, it's going to fall with the rest of the market does. Let's look at the weekly for a second. Yeah, weekly is going to be very important to me. In fact, I would say disregard anything on the lower time frames other than the weekly. If the weekly can close above this 21 exponential, I'm looking to buy that 21 exponential on the next retest around 159 and then and then probably ride this one up because this, this one's going to try towards 1, 190 at that point. Uh, maybe higher, maybe even 200, or sorry, 210 um, at that point. Uh, we do see weekly stokes getting up there, but that's okay. Weekly RSI getting out of the bearish control zone for the first time since June of last year. Jesus Christ, man, it's been a while. Uh, by the same token, if we do close below the 21 exponential, which again is 159, uh, then Mr. Buterall does not look as healthy, and I'd be looking for him overall to actually to actually probably play out some downside. I mean, that that would be pretty damn bad um, if Mr. Buterall does close below 159 uh, end of week, Sunday, 8 p.m. 8, 8 PM Eastern time. So that's really going to set the tone uh, for Mr. Buterall. Again, I'm going to imagine that it probably just does whatever the rest of the majors do. Uh, three day did reclaim the, the 50 exponential, so fair enough. We haven't done that since, um, what is it? Yeah, May of 2018. So that's a, a little bit of a short term change of behavior. Two day rejection of the 89. You know, two, two day to me kind of looks like it wants to come down as well. Uh, two day Stokes, uh, still okay. Uh, two day RSI having some bearish divergence as well. So maybe another test back up to 173. But ultimately, uh, this one's certainly looking weaker than the other ones. But again, at the end of the day, man, these things all follow each other, right? <clears throat> all right, let's go. Let's go look at the uh, the other top shit coins. Uh, we got Cardano over here. Cardano taking a major stab towards our 1900 resistance, or actually even got a little bit a little bit 
above there. Not bad. Um, but overall, you know, this this one's interesting. It's kind of the same. It's, it's the same setup as Mrs. Litecoin. And you know my rule with that. I'm not bearish on anything that has a golden cross and is above all of these moving averages, especially the 21. And this one is well above it right now. So I, I can't really be bearish on it. However, just like Mrs. Litecoin before she had her explosion, major, major bearish divergence here. Daily Stokes are going to be crossing down. And uh, Daily Jewel, Daily Jewel actually is going to be, I mean, you could you could have considered that that a sell the other day, but I would say that it's going to be setting up for a major, major sell relatively soon if this area fails to get taken out. That area being 1870. If 1870 fails to get taken out, then, then this will line up for a perfect sell. Um, but you know, my rule is my rule. I, I'm not, I'm not bearish on anything that's, a, that has a golden cross and is above the 21, uh, which theoretically speaking, you know, could incorporate a test back down to, uh, this level right here at around 1600. That's going to be the real, the real insight onto whether this cross wants to be played or not. Um, so again, just going to have to wait that one out and imagine, you know, if we're, if we're talking about Bitcoin doing this, maybe next sometime next week, uh, early next week, then, then I'll be looking for this one to probably follow suit. Let's go check out uh, BNB Cone. Uh, BNB Cone, um, really resilient. Really fucking resilient. Uh, I wonder how the jewels do on this one. The jewel actually did sig signal a sell. This is a perfect sell as well. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with the jewel, man. I'm gonna have to go. The, I'm gonna have to go with the jewel. We hit our twenty dollar target. I'd be. I and the jewel's giving a major massive sell. I'd roll with it. <clears throat> Again, not financial advice, but not financial advice. But this is this is literally as as perfect as a perfect signal gets. Um, so keep your eyes on that one. Of course, you can't short this bitch, but um, some bearish divergence on the daily as well, just a little bit. Uh, daily Stokes looking tired as well, forming this major major trend line. I would like to see this broken um, for for further confirmation. But yeah, uh, usually usually when I get those perfect signals on the jewel, it's usually one more stab up, maybe test the prior high or around there like nineteen and a half to twenty dollars, and then the downside just starts to tumble like a fucking avalanche. Uh, Zcash, <clears throat> Zcash, uh, the real Bcash perhaps. Um, looking a little bit constructive here, actually, as long as it maintains uh, 65, I would say that this is quite constructive, actually. Um, looks like it actually wants to have another test of uh, 78. But again, this one's going to do whatever the rest of the market does. So it's kind of, you know, it's it, it's it's almost it's almost irrelevant to uh, to really look at it all that much. All right. I'm looking at my forexes right now. Do I want to take that trade? Hmm. No. That's not a good setup. Uh, Bcash. All right. Uh, Bcash in the 200 exponential. I'd be looking for this one to pop back down to about 247. Uh, yeah, 247 area. That's our next support. Uh, Daily Stokes going to be coming down. Daily RSI not really telling us too much, but did, uh, did kind of break out of uh, major resistance. Uh, Tron Cash. What's Tron Cash doing? Okay, so we got the retest back down to the two and a half cent region. That was a buy. Coming back up to test the resistance right over here at two and a half, two two point seven and a half. And uh, this one kind of looks to me like it actually wants to try a little bit higher. Uh, Daily Stokes up. Daily RSI looks fine. Yeah, I think that this one does try to try try a little bit higher. Uh, next area would be two point nine. Neo Cash. Um, Neo Cash looks to me like it actually wants to test the 200 exponential again at uh, 13, 1380 ish. Uh, Daily, Sto Daily Stokes are going to be down, but looking weak. Uh, this is a pretty strong move out of here. Uh, more importantly, as long as this thing maintains uh, 12 and a quarter, I like it. I, I, I would say that this is going to try to consolidate this area and, uh, and try higher um, before anything else. Uh, EOS Cash, same sort of thing. Probably gets another try at this top resistance at 569, but I'm not, uh, I, don't think that it's, I, I don't think that's ready to break. Uh, Daily Stokes probably will be crossing up soon, though. Um, let's go over to a 12 hour. Yeah, here's the thing though, still still kind of stuck in this rising channel bear flag. So not necessarily uh, over and said and done with just yet. Um, yeah, going over to the lower time frames, uh, too, that's too low. What about a weekly? Yeah, weekly looks good. I'd be overall, you know, o o overall from the weekly perspective, uh, if this thing had to pull back down to a 465 ish area, I'd probably be a buyer. Um, okay, cool. Mr. Ripple, me nipples, cash having a nice little move in the overnight hours. This one getting beat up all fucking day, getting back down to our exact level that we spoke about yesterday, fit 32 and a half cent. And then boom, baby rally all the way up to a uh, 30, 38 cent. Nicely done. I do think that this one actually tries higher. I do think that this one tries higher. Most likely let's go over to a weekly.
Weekly is going to matter though. Do we close the weekly above or below the 21 exponential? Kind of the same thing as the other ones. 34 and a half cent is the area to watch. Uh, if we do close above there, I'd probably be a buyer on the retest of it and look for a move over to maybe even 44 and 45 cents. Um, if we close below, then no, I'd be, I'd, I'd kind of remain bearish on it. But we were looking at the Bitcoin pairing yesterday right over here. And yeah, it looked really, 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 really ugly. You know, we were bearish on it for like a long time ago. Uh, but, you know, this is why I was saying I don't really want it. You know, as ugly as the chart looks, I don't want to be a seller right now, man. It's not the right play. It doesn't take much to get this guy going. Um, still no higher highs on a daily, though. <laughs> even even with this move, still not too impressive getting rejected by the 21. Uh, Monero Cash uh, looks looks to me like the same thing. Wants to pop back up to about 69, test this area. Uh, but overall, I do think that this one wants, you know probably comes back down and test some supports after that with the rest of the market. Uh, 60, little, 60 and a quarter is the area that I'd be looking for, if, you know, a little bit more long term. Uh, stellar cash. Ooh, stellar cash. Okay. Uh, hit a major resistance now grinding it out. You know, I, th this, this is a very interesting area for stellar cash just because this same, this same resistance trend line coming all the way back from, uh, December, 2017, that was that first major initial consolidation that was broken late 2018, right over here. And we are once again, retesting this area. We are right there, literally right there. Uh, if this thing can actually close above, um, by end of day, then, I mean, at the very least, I'd be looking for a move towards 14 cents, but realistically speaking, I'd be looking for a move towards 16 and a half cent, um, you know, a little bit more long term. Uh, Stellar Cash actually looking okay here. And I do think that this, you know, I do think that this one might try a little bit higher. We do see Daily Stokes hot. Yeah, we do see, see Daily Stokes still up, Daily RSI, bearish divergence. But I'd give it the benefit of the doubt here, being very resilient. Um, okay, cool. So we just we just spoke about all of that. Let's go check out some uh, some forex for a second. Just a couple of pairs. Let's go look at uh, Aussie dollar. I think we didn't we didn't look at this one yesterday, but um, basically basically kind of in the context of a descending triangle. Uh, greater context is just a very ugly chart overall. <laughs> just very like when we're talking about you know the last decade, pretty fucking ugly price action. Um, by the same token, <clears throat> you know we did just come down and test a major support down around this uh, you know not point seven three or sorry not point seven zero area so i would be looking for us to, to at the very least come back and uh, and retest some resistances right over here at uh, 717 but overall i would say that it is bearish however you know could it break above this area yeah of course it can and if it does if, if you do see it break above this uh, 717 and a half area then i would be looking for a move uh, much higher probably ultimately resulting in a move back here to 735 um very possible uh very possible let's look at a monthly though yeah, monthly is ugly as well. It, it it's the problem with some like this is, is it doesn't take too much to get another pop up because we have we actually have some pretty major uh, bullish divergence coming off these lows. Uh, this low right over here, uh, printing significantly higher highs on our oscillator. So usually I want to see a retest of the twenty one, and that is actually at seven three six. So while the while like the lower time frames look pretty ugly, uh, it actually there actually are some signals that this one does want to break it out to the upside, even though it is ascending triangle. Of course, that's why I would say, uh, you know, I don't care what you call these things it's i only care about supporting resistance anyways uh cad 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 dollar uh canadian dollar um what do we have here do we have another shit coin for a national currency mm, yeah kind of uh actually very similar to the aussie dollar very similar but this one this one looks like it's a little bit more bearish uh interim um more more near term it looks a little bit more bearish to me a uh, little bit more of a harder chart actually as well, but the range as far as the uh, higher time frames go is right here, seven four seven four two nine uh, support seven uh, seven six three seven resistance. Those would be the two major areas we're looking for big big boy trades on uh, in the more interim time frames. Yeah, it does look like uh, it. You know, it actually does look like it's going to try to. Mm, hold on, let's go back to a weekly. Yeah, it 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 does look like there's some more downwards pressure here on the weekly. Uh, it does look like it wants to come back down and retest the seven, the seven four three three ish area. Uh, I would be looking for a bounce there, but overall, this one is, I would say, weaker in general. And we do have this rising trend line over here. So if that, if this area does break at uh, seven seven four three four, what was it seven seven four three? Uh, I'd be looking for a move down here to retest this, to retest this area at seven three seven. Um, other than that, not, not, not really any, any truly strong opinions on it, unless if it breaks this area or if it breaks this area to the upside, which I think was marked off by our horizontal right here. Yeah. Whichever way that it breaks this triangle, that's kind of the next major massive direction. 
you know, overall, I would say that it probably, I'd, I'd have a hard time believing that this one breaks out to the downside. Uh, looking at the monthly, it's been, it's been beat up quite a bit. So while, you know, while I would be looking for another test to downside support, uh, I don't, I'm not, not so convinced that it's actually going to break. I'd, probably going to be a nice bounce. So I think that covers it up for everything that I want to talk about. Back on Mr. Bitcoin right over here. Uh, as we do look at our higher time frames, as it really, really, this is where all the action is going down. Intermediate uh, outlook range is 50, 50, uh, 5250 to 4600. We are literally right in the middle of that. However, when we go down to the lower time frames, you want to be more of an active trader. I would say that uh, the more preliminary range is this 4800 support and 5050 resistance. Uh, I would be looking for another stab back up to 5050 most likely but overall some you know light it's it's that you know i've been saying for the next few days but i really think it's probably going to be next week because uh, we want to we, we want to close a weekly in this range first uh but i would be looking for a retest for a bigger trade right around this blue box territory right over here by the same token this blue box territory right over here offers up some trade potentials as well not because again that trades are just guaranteed 100 to work out nope i can tell you as of as someone who actually fucking does this as a living no trades guaranteed to work out just offers up a good risk reward potential uh but first you know for, first i'd look to short this area just like look to buy this area but if we take this area out to the upside i look to be a buyer on a breakout from 52.50 to likely 56 maybe, maybe even 57 by the same token i'd be a buyer on first pass at 46 to uh to 45 have a stop loss right around here and uh and and, and if we break it out to the downside 40 you know 45.50 uh I'd be looking for a move down to uh 42 4300ish area so that's going to do it for today uh been an absolute pleasure to speak with you on this lovely friday hope you're having the best friday possible because well it's the end of the week which means nothing for a cryptocurrency trader because cryptocurrency doesn't and fuck asleep. So <laughs> there you go. This is what you signed up for. Anyways, uh, I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. Looking forward to seeing you there. If not, well, hey, wishing you well and take care.